I like the story. Ultimately, episode five uh, picks up where that episode four was, and they agree. You know, Henry's aiming a gun at Ellie. He tells Joel, look, I'm not here to hurt you guys. Uh, if I let her go, can we be cool? Can we work together? And Joel, you know, he's in a bad position, got a gun aimed at him. He's like, yeah, we can do that. So they ultimately decide to let bygones be bygones and, and not kill each other. And then they sit down because uh, at this point, Henry and Sam have run out of run out of food. I said running out of food. They have run out of food. And so Ellie and Joel share a little bit of the food that they had left that they took with them from the truck. Mm-hmm. And that sati- satiates them for the time being. And uh, that's when Henry starts to kind of tell Joel a little bit about him being a collaborator. That's why everybody's, you know, after him. And, uh, you know, why him and his brother are trying to escape. They also changed something about Sam. Why don't you tell them what they changed about Sam? Uh, He's deaf in the show. And I personally really like that. Because it makes it that much scarier. And, like, I couldn't even imagine being deaf in a situation like this. I thought you liked it because... you, you hear me talk so much, you can only imagine what it's like to be around me if I couldn't talk. Also that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that that dynamic actually worked really well, too. Uh, that Sam was deaf, and um, uh, Henry was doing sign language, and uh, Sam was really into his art, and he liked to color and color on walls and do all this cool stuff. And so in order to keep his brother kind of happy, Henry would uh, keep a bag of crayons and markers with him. Whenever they got to a safe place, he would let Sam color on paper and on walls. And I thought that was really endearing. At first, I didn't know how it feel. I thought Henry was a little bit younger than the Henry of the game. But mm-hmm. this guy who played Henry, he played the hell out of that role. I'm not going to say that his acting was on par with you know, what happened in Bill's episode. But um, it was very, very heartfelt, and especially uh, you know the wrap-up, which we're going to be getting to in a second. You got a couple notes. What else happened during this scene I mean or after that scene and- um, Kathleen uh, she was talking to the collaborators you know they were trying to fi- she was trying to figure out where Henry was and you know nobody was talking or anything then finally some guy did and but she still ended up killing all of them anyways yeah Kathleen she might seem like Miss Doubtfire but she has a, a stone cold heart of steel she uh, was talking to people who were her friends who were just working with, you know, um, Fedra in their own ways. And she, she wanted, first she said she was going to try them and they would all be found guilty. But then she just told her men to just go ahead and kill them and burn the bodies. That's really, really brutal just to get Henry. We also find out in this episode that Henry mm-hmm. was working with Fedra and what he had done that's so bad and it, that crossed Kathleen so much was that he had worked with Fedra because he needed medicine for his brother who had like leukemia. And uh, they had the medicine for his brother. And so they said, if, you, if we give you the medicine, you got to give us someone. And so he gave them Kathleen's brother, who was a powerful leader in Philadelphia, right? Yeah. But, well, before that, you know, it was showing Henry's story with the um, that guy that was killed in episode four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was showing him their, them finding a place to stay. Um, and then he left. And it was like 11 days later. They ran out of food, and, yeah. And that's when they and went, yeah, they went and that's when they saw Joel, Joel have and, the shootout. Yeah, so that was a really cool call back to the previous episode, episode five, where he looks out the window. He sees Joel after he smashed a truck into that building and having that shootout and killing those guys. So he's watching Joel. He's like, okay, this guy can protect himself. He has somebody with him. Uh, Henry knows the, the town very well. He lived there. And so um, he followed Ellie and Joel. And that's how he's able to find out where they were that night and kind of get in in good cahoots with them. Um, Continue on. I know you got some really cool notes over there. Yeah, well, after that, you know, um, they they all were up in that building and Joel and Henry were talking to each other about how they're going to escape. So Henry tells Joel and Ellie that the only way out of this city, because they have super soldiers that have been sent by Kathleen out knocking doors, going in every building, turning every stone over looking for them the only way out is through these tunnels underground and some of these old buildings in the city the problem is these tunnels have been locked up for 20 years and the reason that they've been locked up is why kate because all of the infected are down under in these tunnels 
And they, so, they captured all of them and put them in the tunnels. Yeah, and, and so that was kind of the scene that we saw in episode four where the, the ground was buckling in one of those buildings mm-hmm. when she went in there with one of her soldiers. And we were like, what the hell is going on here? My mind immediately went to a bloater. But now uh, Henry tells Joel that he heard from some of the other soldiers that three years ago, yep. they cleared out this area and there may be a couple stragglers left, but for the most part, the, the infected there are gone. And so now uh, he talks Joel and Ellie into doing this with him and they end up going down there. And um, this is like a little unrealistic to me because what happens when they get down there, Kate? Um, They're making tons of noise. They were just, yeah, walking down the street, being loud. That's when they got out. But when they were down in the tunnel, they were just talking. Ellie Ellie acts like she has no concept of awareness of fear or death. She thinks every moment in this show is a moment for her to be talking, lollygagging, playing. They get down in these tunnels, and they're just talking like there's nothing wrong. And then they find this little room that obviously people had lived in. And so they close these doors, but... Ellie and Sam are kicking balls and shit up against walls and, and, and making loud noises. And I'm like, I would have blasted her in the face if I was in that room. I said, you never make noise when you're around me. You would have learned a real quick lesson because you play on my life when you're kicking balls up against walls. No balls to the walls around me. But they end up getting out of this area after a few hours. They kind of rested there. That's where, that's where Joel found out that Henry killed Kathleen's brother. They have they like have this fun. really ridiculous scene that's drawn out for no reason. And I actually said it to you. We were watching. I was like, what is this for? Tell us about the scene. Um, it was about Kathleen in her like childhood bedroom. And she was talking about her brother or some like some situation with her and her brother when she was scared and how he would protect her and all that stuff. And it just seemed so pointless and so annoying and I was just like super annoyed that they put that in there it was just a waste of time for them to make the episode yeah. as long as it needed to be uh, and, and for you to see just how deranged this woman really was you know I mean how foolish can you be her brother she said her brother told her to forgive people and she was upset that he died she said look what that got him well ultimately look what it got you I, I just didn't like Kathleen she was a real idiot to me in this this uh, this episode, and I think she got her just desserts, or it's about to come up anyway. So Ellie, Joel, Henry, and Sam are walking through the, the darkness of night. They are making a ton of noise. I mean, Joel is so different here than he ever was in the game by allowing them to talk like they're walking to a house party in the middle of a street surrounded by clickers and infected. I mean, Ellie just has no concept of safety. She has no care in the world for her own life. Oh, I mean, would you be walking with her in this world? No, hell no. I mean, it was just retarded watching the way she was interacting with with this eight year old boy, Henry. I mean, Sam, and just how loud they were it kept pissing me off. But a really cool part to getting ready to happen. So they're walking down the road in this little neighborhood, and suddenly someone opens fire on them from his house. You know, down at the corner. And uh, in the game, it's a really cool scene. Here, it's a pretty cool scene. Uh, they hide behind yeah. cars and they start getting, you know, shot at. Someone has a sniper rifle. And uh, in the game, Joel, he goes around and, and, and uh, you know, takes out three or four guys, five guys before he gets to the house. And he goes up inside the house and kills the guy. But here, it's a little bit different. Tell, tell the viewers what happens in, in the uh, TV show episode. In, the, in this episode, he just went around by himself. You know, he didn't have to take nobody out. He went right into the house. Now, if I was the guy upstairs, I would say, oh, this guy went uh, off on his own. I'm pretty sure he's coming toward me. Like, why wouldn't the guy notice? But he went upstairs and he finds this old guy. It's just one guy in the house. It's this old guy that works for uh, Kathleen. Um, now, you said in the game, it was a guy with a mask. Yeah, I didn't remember mask, that. Yeah, yeah so... It's a really, really old guy who probably shouldn't be out there by himself. And uh, yeah. Joel, he says, hey, look, man, I just want you to just chill out for an hour. And we're not going to bother you. Mm-hmm. The guy's like flinching. And Joel's like, man, don't do it. He reaches, you know, tries to shoot Joel and gets killed. Okay, well, let me just address some of these issues. So you guys might notice this episode has a few cuts in it. And the reason being is that we're under a crazy storm here in Georgia right now. And it keeps knocking out our Internet. 
It knocks yeah. out the internet, knocks out the lights. All I look across there and I see is Kate because she's so white. She is a light. All she sees over here is eyes and teeth. It's crazy. So it's it's knocking our stuff out, but we're working hard just for you. So the next part of the, the story goes, Joel hears Kathleen on this walkie-talkie telling this old man, hey, look, we're almost there. He looks out the window. Yeah, so this, this truck is just barreling through all these cars that are on this road and coming close, I mean, really, really close to Ellie, Henry, and Sam. And so Joel is up in the window using his sniper rifle skills, trying to take out the driver. He fires like four or five times before he actually finally hits them right before they are about to kill Ellie. And so this truck swerves to the left, goes into a house, and ignites in flames. All right, and now we got Kathleen, the killer. This Kathleen... This is probably one Kathleen I dislike just as much as Kathleen Kennedy, but that's for another video. Kathleen gets out of the car, uh, and they start walking forward. She has about 25 soldiers with her because, you know, Henry is such a danger to society. And uh, they're looking for Henry and Ellie and everyone. And Henry and his brother Sam and Ellie are hiding behind a car, probably 10 or 15 feet away from Kathleen. She's speaking into the ether, telling them to come on out. It's over. Then he says, hey, look, if I come out, will you let the kids live? She's like, no. No one's going to live. She's like, no, uh, the kids are going to die. She killed my guys with that guy, Joel, and you killed my brother. So your brother's going to die. And and she's like, he's like, come on, they're just kids. And she's like, no, you fucked with fate. You fuck with destiny, and this is what happens. And so I was like watching this show in real time thinking, that's how they're going to retcon part one to try to make part two make sense because people who played the game knows that there's something very, very dramatic and traumatic that happens in part two that was so controversial that many people decided to never play part two. Um, And so having a situation occur in season one of the show where you hear a character say something like, if you fuck with Destiny, this is going to happen to you. Um, I think they're retconning part one to make part two make more sense in film and I think doing part two on a TV show will be just as controversial that's what I honestly think but anyway the the truck is burning over on the side um, uh, Henry comes out and he looks at, at Kathleen he has his hands up she, she's about to grab her gun and, and blast him and then they look over and the truck starts to fall through the floor of the house and it, it blows up and you see all this fire roar out of this hole and then the floor starts opening up wider and wider and wider. The truck has fallen into one of these caverns, one of these tunnels underground. And what's happening now, Kate? Okay, yeah, the infected. Yeah, it's all the infected. They just come shooting out of the ground. They're running everywhere. There's so many of them. It's like 28 days later, right? They're super fast. It's awesome. This scene and- is... um probably my favorite scene I've seen in the show so far. Uh, Probably 50 infected jump out of this hole at the same time. Miraculously, none of them are on fire. Correct? So no one's on fire, but they're all coming out of a fire pit. That's like uh, demons from hell with, uh, you know, with ice suits on. But they all come just roaring out of this hole and attacking everybody. These um, Black Hawk Marines are, you know, firing at these infected, trying to shoot them. But many, many people are getting taken down. Ellie and them start running. Ellie gets taken down by one, and she's trying to get away. And, of course, Joel, just like the game, he's shooting them to to keep them off of her. And it's really, really tense, Phil. You know, it's very scary moments. And Ellie sees, like, this truck with his back window open, and she runs and jumps into that back window to hide. And uh, Henry and Sam are underneath the truck. Uh, Kathleen is with her main security guy, and he's trying to keep her safe. And then they hear something terrifying coming out of the hole what comes next it's the bloater the bloater and it looks awesome like i really like how it looks and uh were you shocked by what it was able to do tell people just in case you haven't seen it what this thing was able to do it completely just tore somebody's head off their body very, very strong. I mean, it picked up somebody and slammed them against the ground and just killed them immediately. It's just like the game. And it was super, super terrifying. And um, Kathleen, he told Kathleen to run, her security guard. And that's, Don't look back. He fired like 50 rounds from a fully automatic 
machine gun at this guy and it still didn't stop the bloater. The bloater got him, ripped his head off, popped it off like it was nothing. Ellie's inside this truck. What happens when she's inside the truck? One of the little infected sneaked through the window and then... Was it a runner or was it a clicker? It, it was, was a clicker. A clicker. And, yeah. And, and it got in that window, in, in the window, and it was like super contorty. Sliding through and like slithering. Yeah, but I, that's one thing that confused me, though, because they, they react to sound. So she was kind of quiet. I don't see how it knew she was in there. But it got inside there, and then it flipped forward like a contortionist, and then she started moving, and it was coming real fast to try to get her, and Joel was trying to kill it. And it was really, really, really insane. And uh, ultimately, uh, the people, the rest of the army guys were getting inside trucks and running them down and trying to get away. Um, and, and Kathleen, she ends up uh, catching up with Henry, Sam, and Ellie as they run towards Joel, right? Well, my, first, uh, um, first Ellie gets out the truck to go help Henry and Sam because they're under a truck with infect, two infected on top of them. So oh, she yeah. goes and shivs them. Yeah, she shivved them just like the game. And believe it or not, them shivs be dangerous because she shivved them both once in the neck and they were both dead. I was like, oh, it really is like the game, right? Mm-hmm. And, and she's able to extract them from underneath this car and they start running towards Joel. And that's when Kathleen shows up somehow. She's right there on them because, you know, she's dedicated. You know, the, the world's most killer housewife. That's what she seemed like. But uh, she pulls her gun out and uh, she gets ready to kill them. And uh, she's very upset. And what happens to her next? She uh, gets destroyed. I mean, destroyed. It was like, um, <laughs> what's that movie where that gorilla was beating people? Um, it was a show or something we were watching where there was a monkey that killed oh. all the cast. It was um, Nope. Oh, nope. Okay, so the same thing happened uh, to Kathleen from, um, from uh, it may have been a runner or something, because whatever it was, it jumped on top of her and fucked her mm-hmm. day up badly and killed her. Right. Yeah. She got wrecked. And uh, the rest of the infected and the bloater, they turn back and they start running towards the cars and stuff, people trying to escape. And so they're headed toward that city. The city where all these badass mm-hmm. people are at is about to get destroyed. Because all those infected, including that bloater, are headed toward them. Ellie, Joel, uh, Henry, and Sam, they start running the opposite direction. I can only imagine they probably ran five miles because you couldn't have stopped my big ass from stopping running. In a situation like that, <laughs> I would have been gone. I would have probably died from exhaustion before I got caught. But um, they ended up going to um, a little a safe house or whatever, a little place that they all stayed for the night. Ellie was in the room with Sam. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're riding back and forth to one another because they, I guess, built a little bond. And it's just like the game. Another moment like the game where he he asked her, are you still yourself when you turn into a monster? Then he shows her the bite that he has, which is very different from the game because in the game, um, Sam is a little bit older and he didn't let anyone know. Mm -hmm. But this is another moment that's a little unbelievable to me because Ellie's old enough to be, to use some common sense, um, he shows her the bite, and then she shows him her bite, and then um, she cuts her hand, and she tells him that her hand is an antidote. Her blood is an antidote. It's medicine. It's yeah. medicine. And she puts her blood on his leg, and, and uh, she tries to um, cure him. And he asks her to stay up with him all night, and she promised him she would. And just like in the car with Joel, when she said she could stay up all night, the next scene showed her waking up. And, uh, you know, he's sitting on the edge of the bed with his back turned to her. Thank God he wasn't turned towards her when he fell asleep. And she, <laughs> she calls his name. And as soon as she gets to him, he's a, a wild, raging, raving animal. He starts attacking her. She falls out of the room. And they have this incredible moment with Henry and Joel and Ellie. And it's really, really powerful uh, because it just felt so real. Uh, that's the yeah. moment I was like, this is some incredible acting. Henry has to kill his own little brother, who's already infected and virtually already dead, basically. Uh, and he uh, wanted to stop Joel because Joel was going to kill him. And so he ends up shooting his little brother because he, he knew his brother was dead. And then it starts to really hit him in his mind what just happened. What just happened? What did I just do? He kept saying, what did I just do? And the way he's looking at Joel in this moment... It was top notch acting. It looked so real. I mean, he looked like he really had a mental break. This guy who played this role of Henry, he had a mental break, and you could tell at that moment he would have done. He could have killed everyone in that room. He had a mental break, and and Joel's trying to explain to him, "Hey, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right, man." And then he kills himself just like in the video game, and it's it's so so surreal, man. It's crazy. So to me, 
episode five. So far, best episode. And I got some bad news from my wife. She said that we got to wait for the next episode. What is this madness? I, yeah, I think this is the end of like... It's like a mid-season um, Yeah, like a little break, yeah. Oh, why do they do this stuff, man? I, I think so. So don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. Well, I'm telling you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm really willing to hurt somebody to see the next, next episode because they're keeping this very, very close to the... Um, to the original game it feels like we're watching it and i mean watching the game play out these characters even though some of them don't look right you know i know what to expect i'm I'm getting those same heartfelt feelings that i had playing the game and i think they're doing a really really good job on this series um you got anything else to add to this um oh wait never mind yeah episode six is on the 19th she was wrong yeah, yay. So good stuff. Thank you for finding that out for me. Yeah, sorry, right. guys. No problem. So that's good, good. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I think that it's going in the right direction. Episode 5 was really a highlight for me. The kids really, really liked it. Um, it was just I, over. I, I like the little changes that they did. The, you know, with this scene, the house scene where they were shooting. I like that um, Sam was deaf. And um, yeah, I so, didn't like. I didn't like it, like they showed each other their cuts and or their bites, and you know she tried to heal him and all that stuff. Well, that like, that just didn't make any sense because yeah. um, at at least you could have expected her to let Joel know that he got bitten, because yeah. common sense would say he could turn into something if this doesn't work and everybody could be in danger. So, and I hated any scene with Kathleen in it. Kathleen Kennedy. I would have hated it just as bad if they actually had her playing the role. It just didn't make any sense. I was really happy to see her get destroyed. Um, she was also in that show Candy yeah. with Jessica Biel. And uh, she played the same role, but somehow she was like this really sweet housewife in that one. So it is what it is. That's our thoughts on episode four and five of The Walking Dead. <laughs> Not my day. <laughs> Better than The Walking Dead. Guys, that is our thoughts on HBO's The The Last of Us uh, TV show, episode four and five. They were really, really good episodes. Four, four, okay, five, really, really good. It picked up in the end. The last half an hour was really exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing episode six next week. Let us know in the comments if you saw it. Did you like it? Did we miss anything? Were there any Easter eggs that you saw that maybe we didn't see? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'm Kate. We'll see you guys next time. Toodles.